Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters, I've been receiving emails from people saying that uh, in their marriages, because their in-laws were not happy about their spouses marrying who they ended up marrying, they are now nasty to them. So a sister, for example, says, you know, my mother-in-law never ever wanted my husband to marry me. And many people have actually sent me this type of an email. My husband has married me, but my mother-in-law or my father-in-law or someone in the family did not want me to be married to them. So as a result, they are horrible to me. That's one thing. Secondly, they say that in some cases, as a result, astaghfirullah, they visit uh, witch doctors to do some magic or to do something, some form of a dirty deed in order to break that marriage or so that they don't have kids or so that they are trapped in some form of a, a spell. Now, I'd like to tackle this from both angles. Number one, your children choose their spouses and sometimes it will not be according to your taste because you married already. They have a different taste. How many of us love these juices or foodstuffs or so many different things or the weather or outdoor or a destination that our children do not love. They don't even like it. They can't even stand it sometimes. Similarly, your choice of a wife may not be the same as your child's choice of a wife or a husband. So you need to make sure that you leave them with that and you are happy for them. Be happy for your children. Make it easy for them. Make dua for them. Pray for them. Don't go into a marriage thinking that, you know what, this, uh, sorry, don't allow that marriage or let it happen thinking that I'm going to fix them. You need to let it happen knowing that this is the blessing that's coming into our home. If you don't want to interact too much with the person, you don't have to interact so much. But please make sure that you make life easy for them. Allah will make life easy for you. Very important. And this is something that we all need to stick by. So the decision was not yours. It was your child's. And remember, when people go into a home, there's a stigma on both sides. Some people think badly about a mother-in-law even before giving her a chance. Any small thing, they think negative of that mother-in-law. And sometimes the mother-in-law thinks on similar lines regarding the daughter-in-law. They don't give them a chance. They believe that whatever they do was not with a good intention. They stick to their child such that anything the wife says to the son, uh, they feel that perhaps the wife is trying to separate them from the son, uh, from their own son, which is not true. You know, this is a disorder. This is like a syndrome that some people face or some people have. They feel that they're going to be separated. It's a phobia of the separation. You're not going to be separated, number one. Number two is there has to be a little bit of a distance thereafter because that's a child that is independence when the child was born you decided everything for the child as the child grew up Allah took away your decision making little by little such so much so that at a certain age the child wouldn't want to play with toys that you have chosen for the child but rather the child would want a different type of a toy based on its liking and would make a tantrum if it didn't get what it wanted so there comes a stage when bit by bit Allah takes away this authority and then the child becomes a parent or a husband or a wife uh, in his or her own right. You cannot then decide to have that control and be upset with who they married. Give them a chance. If the two of them are happy, what makes you unhappy? Why are you unhappy to see the happiness of your child? That is a disease. It's a disease that is, shows a weakness in faith as well. You need to be happy for others. And if it's your children, you need to be even happier. If they're happy, something makes them happy. So what? Alhamdulillah, be happy for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So number one, you need to uh, understand that you must support their choice of a spouse if it is permissible. If the person has reasonable level of character and deen, you support that choice of a spouse 
And even if they are making a mistake, sometimes if you've tried your best to convince them and they are simply not being convinced, I would say still support them in that little mistake and have them with you rather than lose them completely. And we've mentioned this before. And if they were to come back divorced, we still love them. They're still our kids. Yes, they made a mistake. They didn't listen to us. It doesn't mean we disassociate or cut them off. But we will still support them if they were to come back. May Allah not let that happen. But in some cases it has. They're not a burden. They're actually a part of the destiny that Allah chose for us and for them. Thereafter, when they do get married, help them, support them, give them that independence. That's something that's absolutely important. Don't, be, don't make all decisions for them. Guide them if you need. But don't make life difficult for any one of them. The fact that they didn't marry your sister's or brother's child, you know, that's the culture in a lot of cases with the Indo-Pax as well as with the Arabs and so on. You, go, you marry your cousin or you marry a relative or you marry someone close by and the parents already have this dream and this understanding. We need to marry a wealthy guy who's already earning. He owns already so much. And so yet they, when they were married, they didn't have even a tenth of what they want their son-in-law. To, to be having. So that's a disaster. We start off with nothing. The Quran says, In yakunu fuqara min fadlihi. Even if they're poor, Allah will bless them with lots of uh, you know, blessings and the sustenance through his own virtue. Allah will give them. They wanted to do halal, you supported the halal. I know of many parents, they will delay. Uh, they'll say, okay, fine, this guy is fine. Okay, but I need to delay it because he doesn't have a job, he hasn't graduated, he hasn't. So they facilitate adultery. And I'm telling you, they facilitate with knowingly or unknowingly. They facilitate zina. And they're happy with it. And they're okay with that, with the excuse of these people are not wealthy enough. They don't have sustenance. He doesn't have his own place, etc. I promise you, you get that kitab done. You get the nikah done. And Allah will open their doors wider than he's opened your doors. Because when you're bothered about halal and haram, the doors of sustenance shall open. When you're not bothered about it, you open the doors of haram. And even if you were to be sustained later on, it comes with a lot of baggage. May Allah make it easy for us. So please understand this my beloved parents so some people say no we'll wait for two years for them to graduate we'll wait for them to this for them to that and that that gap is only for you to cry and weep that's what it is may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our parents with an understanding and we are hypocrites because we are hypocrites because we do things for our children or we put restrictions that we didn't even have ourselves and we want their spouses to be wealthy. In some cultures, in some of the Indo-Pak countries and even elsewhere, uh, they make the woman pay a dowry, which is not Islamic, by the way. It has nothing to do with Islam. They make the woman pay a dowry and a price and they want to marry into homes that have wealthy girls because they know that, oh, my son is going to be set. There's some cultures. I didn't know this until I traveled to some places and they told me that, you know what? Uh, the girl, the boy goes to stay with the girl's side. Now, some people say, no, uh, you know what? We're looking for someone who's wealthy, who's rich. And because you married someone who was not so rich, now we will not be having the prestige. We won't have the money. Come on, may Allah forgive us all. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous to be a parasite. People think they have children and based on where they get their children married, they will become wealthy. They will have a lot of money. They will have a lot. That's nonsense. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and guide of every one of us. So once they've married, we make sure that we have supported them. We make life easy for them. We give them their independence. They don't always have to come to sit and eat with everyone. They don't have to attend functions with everyone. If they want to, Alhamdulillah. If it's good, Alhamdulillah. If you want them, you can encourage them and invite them. They may choose not to. Don't worry. It's their life. Don't make it like you have to all be together all the time because that will make the hearts rip apart in a lot of cases. There are some where, mashallah, Allah's granted them mahabba and love. But in some, in a lot of cases, the, the more you impose on others to be together, the more they dislike you. They can't wait to get away. You don't have to have the Eids together. You don't have to have the, the functions together. They don't have to attend. Encourage them and have such a good relationship that they themselves will want to come on those days.
but to impose things on one another. I know people who make their daughters-in-law cook, for example, or vice versa. And I'm not saying mothers-in-law are bad. No, they're not. But sometimes the relationship is toxic. And, and who to blame? It could be either. It could be both. So uh, I know sometimes people say, no, I'd like, you know, we're having visitors or guests or we're going to have something, a function. And then they draw up a whole list as though this person is a slave. I want you to make this and do this and do it at this time and do it this way, that way. And they just say, harder, harder, okay, harder, fine, that's okay, fine, nah, yes, yes, etc. As though, wow, you know, you just have a paid chef. This is unpaid, free. I can just dish out instructions. It's no longer like that. It doesn't work like that. We need to have such a loving relationship that they will come forth and say, what should we do? What, what do you suggest? This is what I suggest. And you can say yes, and you can say whatever else you want. That's the loving relationship you are supposed to be having. Thereafter, uh, like I said, make life easy for people. Don't impose on them. Be happy. If they're happy, it doesn't mean they, they've taken you away. They have to have their independence. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You know, someone was saying, well, you know, What's going to happen when you have children? What if Allah doesn't give them children? What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you leave the place you're living in, for example? What, what will happen in that case? And you have to go to where your in-laws were when you were looking for someone who never lived in the place where you were forced to go and seek refuge. Just an example. So anything can happen. You make the right decision based on the person. A lot of the times, the circumstances that we're searching for, we're searching for Jannah or heaven on earth. So our daughters don't get married. So we keep saying no. So, you know, we don't agree. So people do things behind our backs. So people continue in sinful behavior. And who's to blame? I promise you, those who are creating the obstacles are to blame. Be easy. Be easy going. Never mind. It's okay. We're living in a generation where you cannot depress everyone. Do you know that 90% of homes, and this is my own a calculation based on a few factors. 90% of homes have issues not very far off from what I'm discussing today. 90% of homes have issues not very far off from what I've just discussed. Okay, the next issue, and maybe I might dedicate another whole session on the next issue because we don't want to make the session too long. So the next issue that I will discuss is people who want to, who want to actually cast a spell on their kids and on their in-laws, and on people within their family. And this actually not only removes them from the fold of the deen, because what they've done, the hadith says, Man sahara faqad ashrak, whoever has, in, whoever has done, cast a spell, whoever has participated in sihr, in magic, has actually associated partners with Allah, which means they've removed themselves from the, the fold of belief. How can you call yourself a believer in Allah when you're doing something that is Disbelief. Allah says you cannot do that. It exists, but you cannot do it. You should not do it. It's, you know, uh, your desperation. You want something so badly. Leave it to Allah. You know, make a good dua. You cannot go out and cast a spell. People go to some uh, outwardly religious people who can say, okay, I'll do you something that will separate husband and wife. Allah says that's from shaitan. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah speaks about that being from the jinn kind and shaitan. Long verses where Allah speaks about Sulaiman alayhi salam's time and Harut and Marut and the others and so on and how the, 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 the teachings of evil were there to separate husband from wife and, and to create disaster. Parents are doing it. Imagine, parents, family members are doing this. How are you going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So tomorrow I want to discuss how we can protect ourselves from this, how we should be protecting ourselves from this. And inshallah, I hope that we get an opportunity to actually do this tomorrow. If not, it will be the next day. But you keep watching and I'm going to post this on YouTube as I always do on my YouTube channel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone. I hope we've learned a thing tonight. Let's facilitate and make easy for our children. You cannot be upset with the choice of your child. Come on. Even if that person was might have been according to you, not the ideal, give them a chance. Give them a chance. Speak to them. They might be better than what you thought. I know of parents who've given chances to certain you know, uh, kids and they've come back and said, you know what, this child is actually much better than what I had in mind for my child. Amazing. So please do this and please understand it's the will of Allah. If really they want that, make it easy for them. Facilitate it for them. That's, what, that's why nikah and marriage in Islam is so easy from the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But from the part of mankind, we make it difficult. So we won't be able to answer Allah.
when he says, why do you make it difficult? Well, he didn't have money. Why did you make it difficult? Well, you know, his skin color was a bit too dark. Why did you make it difficult? Well, you know, he was, uh, I had someone else in mind for him. What else are you going to tell Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, may Allah bless every one of us and grant us goodness. I won't have the chance to look at uh, all of these comments, but inshallah, I appreciate your participation in this. I hope to see you again soon with the rest of this topic. It's not done. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.